that's it. The goal that everybody is more in your soul when this finishes. And, you know, it's just turning up. You just turn up. And these satsangs, you know, are the easiest way to grow. They're just the easiest. The support of satsangs. I mean, all the sages say this. And, um, you know, selfless service, you know. Like I've told you guys many times that my work with you has accelerated me. It's been why I've grown so much. Yeah, I want to find your heart. There's a very, um, it feels you're very, very sensitive. Michael, good to see you. Yeah, all of you, Alex. You know, Nina, all of you, uh, Atiba, Bethan, and Suzanne. Yeah, Jenner, Marco, all of you. Um, I Okay, what I'm feeling is you're very sensitive hearts. And it's funny because I'm seeing uh, like a black virus. Isn't that interesting? It's nothing that I've seen. Um, it's um, It feels like um, it's like distrust or fear. Okay. So this happens on the journey. This kind of material will rise up in us. And, you know, really the more sensitive we are, the more we feel it. And the spiritual journey can seem like it doesn't work. That's what I'm feeling this is. It's sort of like the, a distrust or despair coming with a feeling like it doesn't work. But you see, what we do and we don't even realize we're doing this we block spirituality and then we try to get it to work for us we try to get it to work for our egos our egos prop themselves up with it and we don't even realize we're doing this and we can be on the journey for a long time and be doing this right Right. So, you know, when this darkness comes up, like I'm feeling it, like this virus, it, it's like I'm seeing kind of a dark worm. Um, this is actually can turn into a doorway into truth. Right, Jenna and Tindra. Turns into a doorway into truth. This. Part of you, some of you are having trouble with the whole idea of a dark worm in the heart. I mean, some of you have trouble with the idea of darkness in a way. You know, I didn't even think I would be talking about this. I have something completely different uh, prepared or that I thought about all day. But this is really pressing. It's I see this dark worm in a big heart and it's kind of like where we maybe are lacking self-respect even. We're lacking um, self-worth. Right. Some of you feel quite lost with what I'm saying, but you know, I'm so used to this and Anne has been, you know, doing a lot of translation with this, with this uh, uh, sessions I've been doing. And often, you know, the person doesn't understand what I'm talking about. And Anna even might not understand. And then slowly it becomes obvious that I've been talking. I've been seeing something operating in the person unconsciously. And I'm shining a light. Right, Anna? And it, the person transforms. So the same thing happens with groups like this. Freddie, hi. 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 <laughs> So I probably started too early, you know, but I've been talking about there's this desire to love and everybody's very sensitive, but there's this, I'm seeing it as a black worm. And, and I do think the issue is self-worth. And you see, on the journey, when things don't pan out the way we think they should, we go, oh, I'm doing it wrong, or this isn't working or I've made a mistake.
Yeah. And you haven't. You haven't made a mistake at all. But there's a deeper level of love wanting to come in and a deeper level in your wanting to clear on your shadow sides. You know, sometimes I feel like I'm standing at the bottom, at the deepest part of the ocean talking to people. <laughs> you know, I'm talking from this, this depth. And I know that we're not used to it. But it's there in you. From the center of the earth to the stars, your souls are everything. You are everything. Ah. Okay, you guys, I think this is a tough satsang, okay? This has got all the signs of a tough satsang, as if, like, it's concrete a bit. And I have to bring out a hammer. And I'm not going to hammer anybody at all. It's just love. Yeah, but maybe your resistance can melt as a result. That's it. It's sometimes it's hard working with people because I, I shine a light on something they're not understanding and they will feel bad about themselves. You know, that's what our egos do. We feel bad about ourselves that we're doing something wrong, but we're not. We're just growing. Right. That is what's really wanting to happen, your souls. Your souls are really wanting you to grow. I can feel this, okay? It's in all of you. It's really strong in all of you. Okay. Okay, that's very good. Okay, there's a door opening in all of you. I can feel it. Some of you want to open it. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. Some of you are feeling this opening. That's it. That's it. It's really, really deep level. Yeah. It's really, really good. Yeah, just, just be with yourselves, you guys. Just be with yourselves. Mm, yeah, just be with yourselves. It might feel hard for some of you. You know, somebody sent me a, a message and it was just that it, we were coming by October 2024, the dark father energy was going to be finished, complete, sort of squashed on the earth. So, there is a big, big opening into a new understanding and a new energy past this dark father, which would be in both sexes, of course. Right. Okay, please. Like, remember your souls, okay? Okay, maybe you can hear it through my voice. You are eternal souls. We are all eternal souls. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. There's a, a radiance coming in, kind of golden radiance. 
you know, for the ones who this is like for something completely different, because this is actually very unlike anything I've done before. Just um, just be with it, you know. That's it. That's it. I'm seeing it coming up through your control center into your hearts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's funny the messages I get. I, I was working with someone today and her soul told me, if you tell her that she's on the way to being kind of, that um, she could be a bitter, sad old lady, lonely old lady, if you actually say this to her, she will she will choose to shift into her heart and she needs to. So indeed, I said this to her, and it's true. Any of us could become a sad and bitter old person. And um, she shifted into deciding to be true to her heart. That's it. It's that easy, you guys. You just decide that you'd rather be an old person with a wide open heart even if you had a few battle scars from ego battles, or your pension was a little more uncertain than it would have been if you stayed sort of stuck. The overwhelming issue with This group, so I'd say us, I'll say us, is about loving and honoring yourself. Okay. And as Anna and I have been laughing about, I have been like madly standing up, gently standing up to people. Because one of the things that can happen with this energy is it's just seen sort of like mum. And it, the power of it isn't recognized or allowed. So I've been gently going, hey, hey, <laughs> don't do that. Hey, please. So it's, it's kind of also a reflection with all of you guys. There's this. There's this hesitation to love and honor yourself. It's it's. It's right across the board in everybody. Okay, this is the dark worm. It's that little secret feeling. Maybe I'm deluded. Maybe I'm, I haven't got much to give. Maybe I'm a little crazy. You know, Christ was crucified and, you know, terrible things have happened to saints, right? We know this. But I'll tell you, there is a particularly mind-numbing thing that can happen that isn't violent, just as you're trying to offer love to people. And I'm sure that many of you will know what I'm talking about. You're trying to offer love to people and it's not seen or it's rejected. So this worm comes in like, well, maybe I've got it wrong. Maybe I'm off. Right. Right. I mean, we're always being purified. We can always become clear, but the child instinctively knows, has a sense of their self-worth. A 
child knows their self-worth. They know they've got a lot to learn. They know their self-worth. They know they're part of God. That's I'm wanting, I'm inviting you to feel that more. Okay. Because, you know, another thing that's been happening and Anna has been listening to this is when I'm working in sessions in the living room, big peals of laughter come, come out. And the person and I are laughing so hard. We're almost falling off the couch and we're laughing at how they're using their mind. Do you understand? Like the ego tricks. You know, all the excuses that I hear for all the reasons why people are, are saying that they're not in their soul. You know, it's like, um, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm Aries. <laughs> that was one. Somebody was Aries. And I'm like, I'm Virgo. Like, <laughs> Virgos can be so caught in their mind. Like, there's no, you guys, there's no excuse. We, we don't have any excuse. Like, don't let your mind give you excuses for not being a truth. Just move into truth. Yeah. Love and honor yourself. What have you got to lose? What did Anna say today in the kitchen? Anna, <laughs> sorry, I'm bringing you up a lot. But she said about, you know, moving into truth. She went, why not? Yeah. It's like, why not? I mean, it's like better to just walk you know, going like, okay, I'm a person who's walking in truth as opposed to I'm a person who's try trying to do the spiritual journey right or I'm a person who's so scared or I'm a person who's crippled by my ego as a lot of us can feel sometimes, we can feel crippled by the ego. But we're not, we're just growing beyond it. You're just growing beyond your ego. Well, I'm taking this black worm and I'm just giving it to Ama, okay? <laughs> It's still been sitting here in all its revolting glory. <laughs> I'm giving it to Ama on all of our behalf. Mm. That's it. Okay. Some of you are really getting the self-love coming in. Some of you are really feeling it. I can feel this. You know, one of the things that helps with a spiritual journey is when we have nothing to lose. That's another, you know, <laughs> sometimes we can move really fast when we've got nothing to lose. But whatever speed, it's all good. I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm not pushing you. There's not, there's no great value in speed, actually, you know. Okay, maybe some of you are feeling a little better than when you first joined. I can feel this desire to grow. Yeah, you have this desire to grow, I can feel it. Is anybody brave enough to come forward with a comment or observation or question? Because otherwise, I'm just going to keep trying harder. And I don't think it's kind of, it feels like I need some input for balance. I have a comment. Okay. Yay. Okay. So um, when we met two months ago, yeah, you had told me you'll see a dramatic shift in about two months. Yeah. And um, it's more than a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like uh, for me, you know, I, I believed in it and oh man. Things have really, really shifted around around my life in many, many ways. And it was almost like uh, to the day two months ago that things really started shifting 
And um, I guess I just want to thank you um, for or Ama th for working through you. You know, um, um, I've seen I've I've had really hard past however many years, and um, I'm happy and things things are are moving along slowly, uh, uh actually quite rapidly. And um, my spiritual like uh, my my sadna, everything's just I'm going to church. I'm just doing all these great things and um. I feel like my light is shining more since I've met you. So I'm grateful for, for that time we spent on the beach. Aww. Uh, you know, this is, this is, this keeps me alive. This keeps me young, Jandra. This really, this is it. It's like, thank you. And thank you for turning up to say this. And, you know, uh, uh, just, uh, Witnessing people, especially when they're shining light, witnessing them gives them permission to be it, you know? And when somebody loves us, like Amma, we're also grace. They're just, there are no words to describe Amma, but when someone who is also not Amma, loves us at a very deep level it's very freeing uh -huh. and jendra you're going to love a lot of people deeply in your life so i mean there's no ceiling on and there's no ceiling on your life actually as you get this as you get this that it's all love really there's no ceiling and for all of you guys there's no ceiling yeah. Right. And that you're very, very valuable because Jandra, that's what I told you. I saw your value. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I see the value of everyone here that I've met. And if I haven't met you, the love is coming to you. So this worm has gone. So I gave it to Ama, but, but also you guys have shifted out of it. Hmm. Right. Mm. Mm. I'm feeling that there uh, with you, some of you may be getting, you may get insights as we're talking, as I'm talking. I'm seeing a lot of pearls uh, raining down on you. So I'm thinking, Maybe you're going to make some connections um, as I talk, even, or get some insights. Right. Right. Okay. You know, this unconditional love is available for anybody who says yes. You know how they say many are called, but few. Was it? Many are called, but few. What is that expression? Something like that. Many are called, but few, but are, few, few are chosen. Few, few are, chosen. are chosen. Yeah. Okay. It isn't that they're chosen, you guys. It's that a few say yes. Do you understand? There's nobody choosing but us. <laughs> Many are called, few are chosen because few of us actually say yes right because we don't think it's possible and we don't think it, we're good enough that's the usual thing but when you say yes and really mean it it comes well, that's beautiful it's very beautiful
Yeah. Does anybody have any questions about the journey or any kind of spiritual question? The thing is, the vulnerability with my work is I'm so giving, you know, it comes out of me and I do body work and I talk and everything. So the vulnerability is I can let people be too passive when really for the journey, you know, you have to come forward a bit. Yeah, you have to step forward to receive. It's like, and you don't always have to talk in a satsang or anything, but I, we, we've been taught to be so passive, to be kind of come in, sit down, shut up, kind of, you know, like little kids at school, come in, sit down, shut up. We, we do this with the spiritual journey and, and it, it's it's far more um you 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 participate the cells of your body are participating yeah it's like you have to step forward into the light you know you know when I'm working with people sometimes I'll I'll sort of draw a line and say you know step across the line a step across the line of into a new perspective, like, you know, Columbus getting in the Santa Maria and sailing for the new land. I mean, some people thought he was just going to go off the center of the, uh, go off the edge of the earth that they thought was flat, but he found a whole new land. So that's what happens. Yeah. Or maybe you're just too scared to grow. <laughs> maybe that's the truth. Can I say something? Nina, yes, please. Hello. Um, so it's hard to put into words, but I think where I struggle a lot of the time is, you know, you often want to come from a place of service and love towards others. And that's kind of also how I look at like dissolving myself, dissolving my ego is being from a place of love and service. But I've also experienced like a lot of pain and hurt from others I think um, in putting up with a lot I kind of end up hurting myself but I still try and keep like my heart open and loving them anyway but then where do I draw that line between like okay forget your own pain forget your own hurt and still be from a place of love and service but I've realized also in doing that actually I'm doing violence towards myself so where is that line drawn where is that balance? right right so what i want you to get to understand is it's your head that's doing violence to you okay mm -hmm. okay so what we do is we'll say okay i want to come from a place of service but we we almost divorce ourselves away from it like we're we're not including ourselves in the equation. You understand? You see, this, you know, this is such an important point you phrased. And it is the place where 90% of the spiritual seekers stumble. Okay. Like, okay. So, what will happen if you do what you're doing? You just kind of say, okay, I want to be of service. What will happen is you will get wounded exactly like you were wounded in your family of origin. You know, do you mm -hmm. understand? It will repeat, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, okay. Now, if you're coming from uh, 
a really deep philosophical point where you have really decided that there's no point to life at all except to be of service, then what will happen is when you serve, you will, al will allow yourself to be healed through the service. Do you understand? So where you're talking about what you're, it's actually from an ego spot. You're standing from the ego saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a service. And it's just not, and it's not working right. What's, what's wrong? Okay. So what's wrong is, you know, you have to do it from your heart uh, being of service. You, it's like, okay, I'll tell you what I did. So when I stood up from the mess of my life, I had made a philosophical decision that if there was no God, we might as well, I might as well go out and shoot people and jump off a bridge. Or if there was a God, I was responsible to serve the creator in everything I did. But the creator also included me. Okay, so that's the thing I think you're forgetting, is you are also the creator, Nina. So it's like you're like the creator, forgetting that she's the creator, trying to share love. So, you know, where is the love coming from if, if you've forgotten you're the creator? Do you see? Yes. Because then it's it, always limited. It's always limited. Always. And there's secretly you're going to want uh, people to behave in certain ways back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'll you'll want to get some some payoff for it, like a thank you or uh brownie points from God or yeah. You know what I think is most important for you, Nina, is for you to spend like six months to a year just practicing being yourself. What would you be like if you didn't put any demand on yourself like that? You know, you might find that actually you became nicer. You became more loving. Okay. Maybe not. How does it though? How does it feel when I say that? Just like give yourself a six months to a year just to just to have no agenda for yourself. Mm. It feels good actually. Because I think a lot more is opening up for me these days and I've realized like how how much I've kept myself small for so long and so I'm like exploring new ways of kind of opening and yeah it's right. more freeing to know there's no right yeah right and there's also something else I want you to understand and everybody please understand this that any action that we do to help others even if it comes, you know, half from our ego, it will come back to us and to our lives and it will help open up our lives. Just like what you're experiencing, Nina. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. The love isn't wasted at all. It will always find a way back to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Sometimes when I'm passing people who are begging, I don't get the feeling to give. And then sometimes I'm passing people who are begging and then I get the feeling to give. Do you see what I mean? I, I listen to my own heart. Like you can include your own heart in your life more. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's very beautiful. It's very beautiful. Nina, you're going to find that this opening that you're experiencing is going to be enhanced now. It's going to be bigger. Yeah, that's it. 
And remember in life, you know, sometimes our heart opens and then it will contract. It will go back and forth. So, you know, contractions aren't bad. So be patient, please. You know, love yourself, compassion for yourself, and it will open again. But yeah, Nina, you've got a heart of gold in there, you know. And I, I don't flatter. But, you know, really, people are so beautiful that I don't even need to flatter because, you guys, it's just like, you're so beautiful. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And remember, the other thing is, we're all in our inner child. So, you know, like the way we give light, love will, until this, till we love the injured child fully out of ourselves, till, till the injured child becomes the divine child, the, there will always be some contamination in our giving. And we just have to be patient and compassionate with ourselves. You know, a a Ama said when they, they were going around making uh, cement houses for some of the people who lost their houses during the earthquake and or tsunami and um the, the, they were you know they were all the ashramites were building these houses out of cement and the the, the people the recipients weren't even just you know when they finish you have to pour water on the on the structure for about 24 hours every so often during a 24 hour period for it to set. And even the recipients of the homes didn't want to do this. So the ashramites had to keep, you know, pour the water on and they were complaining. And, and Amma said, you know, they're just be expressing their natures. That is their nature to be like that. And your, you know, the ashram's nature is to be generous. Um, and what she didn't say is your your karmas are going to be very different. <laughs> so, you know, if, if somebody treats you badly, it's like, um, it's just, um, you know, just, just look at it like it's clearing some karma that you didn't know you were carrying. And, you know, it's a blessing, really. <laughs> you know, I, I've had to uh, be so uh, explain my life, uh, take the effort to re-explain my life in these ways, you know, to tell myself, well, it's just some karma clearing. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, Nina. Yeah. I'm, I, I feel a lot of instinctive trust in your, in the quality of your heart. Yeah, I do. That was very powerful. Thank you so much. Uh, Okay, good. Has anybody else got? Oh, you guys are so adorable. Yeah. Yeah. Prabhasuda. Yes, Michael. Hi. 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 Um, last time we met, you asked, um, do you notice your relationship changing? Yeah. And uh, I said at the time, well, no, not really. Um, but but now I would say it shifted. Um, and that for me, uh, you know, you know, it was really nice because I wasn't I didn't feel like I was pushing anything. No. And it just shifted by itself. So I thought that was really interesting, and I really appreciate that. Um, and, you know, the other thing I found was that um, uh, just, uh, you know, I if, if I get to a point where I feel like it's, it's more distant, I just feel like, um, oh, I just have to re-decide. I just have to say yes again. And um, so I just feel that, you know, that got me, that helped a lot. 
And you, you got that yourself, right? About deciding to say yes again. That came from your own heart. Yeah. Right. That's it, Michael. That's it. All of you, you will get knowledge coming up from your own heart about how to proceed. That's beautiful, Michael. That's beautiful. Right. Yeah. I, I really appreciate it. And thank you. Well, thank you for speaking and thank you for coming along with it. So for taking it all so much to heart, you know, because then it really works. Yeah. I am so glad that it's that you found a way that's just, and it came from your own heart. You went, you know, that's it, you guys, that's it. It's the opposite of worms. It's like you've got um, you've got uh, divine guidance in your hearts. Uh, Any time you make room for it, it will come up and show you what to do. Yeah. Okay. Good. Right. No matter what trouble you're in, no matter what. That's it. But you have to trust yourself enough to receive it and do it. That's it. Michael, I'm very happy. Fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Mm, good. Thank you for coming forward, all of you who have spoken. It's lovely. Mm. That's it. I can feel you're all receiving love right now. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Mm. That's it. And I'm also seeing uh, these like flashes in your hearts around with um, increased uh, self-awareness and you might not um, feel it for a bit but I can see it um, these flashes of your heart in your hearts it's like um, increased self-awareness will be coming in yeah yeah That's it. Nah, it's just bliss. It's just bliss, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's also a return to center in some of you. If some of you have been feeling a little off, it's coming back to return to center. Wow. And a deeper surrender. You know, we go back and forth between joy and sorrow. And the more surrendered we get, the more still we get in the middle. So when it goes back and forth, we're, we don't feel it so much. The boat isn't rocked as much because we've developed this still center. Mm -hmm. It takes time. Gray hairs help, so don't worry. But it's as if there's this surrender kind of wanting to happen in everybody into this deeper stillness. That's it. So the movement of the pendulum won't be so boat rocking. That's it. That's it. 
That's it. You know, when you get a clearing in your sacral area, you'll suddenly have the feeling of, oh, I can do this. It's not too hard. Yeah. So that's what I'm feeling is wanting to be cleared in some of you too, around your sacral area. Yeah. That's it. In lots of clients, when I'm even people I've been working with a while, and they'll still present with, um, you know, bodily pains, and they'll still go as if they're bad for having the pain. But remember, every single pain, every single disease is just coming up to be cleared. Okay. And if you see it more like that, you can move through difficulty much faster. And if you're going, oh, you know, woe is me, which is so humanly tempting. I know all about it. Yeah. You can have both. You can feel all the, you know, being sorry for yourself. And at the same time, you can know that it's it's just happening to clear, to help you clear. That's it. I'm feeling some high level uh, entities uh, joining us. It's interesting to help some high level spirits. Mm. I'm actually feeling Bruno, <laughs> Bruno uh, Tiba. I'm feeling a Bruno groaning joining us. Isn't that funny? Mm. Yeah, it's funny. He was a German healer who just healed hundreds of people and just after the war, if you look them up, there's some YouTube documentaries that I highly recommend. Yeah. But he's here. I don't know why. Um, I'm just getting that he's saying he just came to help support the energy, actually. I'm just getting like. I'll tell you, there's probably more than Bruno, eh, Freddie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You know, the great thing about this dark time is when people wake up, we can wake up and be just extremely pure of heart. Okay? That is the great gift of the darkness. Of there are healers developing that the level of purity is just off the charts. Yeah. Yeah. I've told you about that um, Dr. Sanjay Ragav of Conscious Circle Australia. He is just exquisitely pure of heart. Yeah. And there, you know, there's some around. Right. And, you know, anybody who can stand being in the energy of the sad sayings, pure of heart, come on. You can't, you just, I'll tell you, if you weren't pure of heart, you couldn't stand it. Yeah. We're all works in progress. Mm. That's it. That's it. I'm not quite sure why I thought to tell you this, but, you know, we've all had many other lives and we've all been some lives famous and some lives not famous. And maybe we've done terrible things, but, you know, 
part of when I realized that I, I, I ha was having a bath one day and suddenly it dawned on me that I was, I had been Sappho and Sappho was a lesbian uh, lyric poet, poet, poet in ancient Greece. And, you know, when I went back to, to Greece, I had just ecstatic experiences and I couldn't understand why, but indeed I, was Sappho, her writing, they're just fragments. Her writing reminds me of me. And the funny thing is, at that time, she was the one who brought in the personal I. In that time of, of the literature, the, that literature, there was no I. It was more just heroic feats. You know, Homer, it was like heroic feats and the stories. There was no personal I. And she brought in the feminine polarity of the, you know, the eye and the more the feeling and the emotions. And, you know, I have the same feeling that I'm I'm doing the same thing this life, but I'm bringing it in with connection to the divine. Do you see? I'm still bringing in the eye, but this is now the big eye 2000 years later. I'm bringing in the big eye of the soul energy. And there are lots of other people doing it, too. Obviously, you know, huh, there are lots of people, but it's just that I just do it in this very, very feminine way. And, you know, when I remembered that life, it really helped me understand my life and why it was so I was struggling. So on the patriarchy and why I had such a drive to shine a light on where the patriarchy hinders our human development, because without this feminine energy that, you know, just will loving witness that just allows, that just loves despite a baby having six fingers. We, we can't blossom, you guys. I mean, this is the trouble with many of us. This is why I have such an impact on people because I bring a little bit of feminine energy in and they take off. It's like they blossom like anything. Do you understand? Because they've got they've got all the training, all the structures, all the understanding, but without this really deep feminine, you know, without this really deep connection to the feminine, we're all a bit crippled. So it's sort of like when you get it, you can blossom. And that's all I'm giving to you, really. It's like the female face of God energy. A very deep feminine love and understanding. Like understanding of your humanity. Understanding and acceptance of your humanity. You don't have to be perfect. You're beautiful divine being in human form and also you're a beautiful human being who's also a divine being yeah right both divine being in human form but also a beautiful worthy human being who is also divine a mother loves the souls of her children and her, their human selves. The mother couldn't choose between the two things. She just loves it all. It's like that with me and you guys. Mm -hmm. And the only battles I ever have with you is if you're having trouble letting me love you in a way, if you're having trouble accepting this feminine energy in your lives, you know? Because without the feminine energy, life gets very meaningless and full of despair. But, you know, without the male energy, I'll tell you, <laughs> nothing happens for women. I mean, I know from the spiritual journey, you you, it, you you go into the deep feminine energy and I'll tell you, nothing happened in my life for decades, you know, because it was so feminine. So the guys it was just adore you guys. But 
right now we're 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 so needing the this deep feminine. Some of you have closed off a bit. We can't finish till you've <laughs> till you've opened. I'm not gonna let you go. <laughs> till you've opened. I had a sad saying here and I, I told everybody that I was gonna call guards at the door and not let them out of the room till they shifted, you know. Yeah. There's some of you, there are about five of you that are having trouble receiving this love. Then I don't know, maybe something I said bothered you. That's part of why it's wise for teachers just to be silent more sometimes. <laughs> yeah. We've all got different minds and different opinions, you know? Yeah. Please receive the love I'm giving you, though, please. Some of you really, really need it. Mm. Right. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, that's interesting. There, there's some women who are really accepting this loving feminine energy coming in. It's coming into their bodies. Actually, right through their vaginas, it's really beautiful. Mm. That's it. Right. That's it. The rest of you, it feels like you're, all of you have shifted. It's like you're in a, a lush garden. Mm. Yeah. Remember what I said, that it's the end of the dark father. What is it? October 2024, you know, we won't know ourselves. <laughs> Who will the human beings be without dark fathers, really, in our political realm? And <laughs> yeah. But remember, women carry the energy too. It's not just the guys. Maybe we're into, you know, this golden age, which. You know, Sai Baba said to start in uh, 2025, golden age. Yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah. You know, don't be shy about letting the universe love you, okay? Keep you know, you know, Abraham used to teach us to try and draw energy from the air if we were tired. Yeah. Yeah, please. Well, I'm going to wrap you all in my loving energetic arms yeah and my energy is always there for you to to draw on if you need it but you've got ama and mira but still the more the merrier or babaji does we're coming round to close but does anybody we can keep going if somebody needs to uh, say anything or um, ask a question. Maybe there's not too much to say. I don't know. Okay. Hmm? Atiba? Yeah, it, it's muted. It got muted again. So oh. no. Yeah, I was, I was, I'm still wondering about this uh, female energy. When I was listening to you, mm -hmm. I felt uh, like a, an inner pressure or an idea that as a fe this female energy should be strong or it should be strong, something, uh, something is going on there. So I just wanted to come forward with this. Yeah, that you felt it should be strong? I should be, yeah. I should, as a as a woman, I should be strong or something. But it seemed like effort some. Right, sounds like it. I yeah. don't know. 
I mean, I mean, that's, you know, that's kind of like the distortion of the worm. Exactly. We don't, do you understand? Yeah. So we're, we're both strong and weak. I mean, for me, feminine energy is, is kind of like, it's almost like a feeling more than anything else, you know, it will come into my body through a cool, cool feeling and it will be like spacious. I'll feel utter space around me. But the thing is, Atiba, you know, we're strong. And then, um, you know, we, we have periods of weakness. And then if you pray to God and really pray um, and ask for help during periods of vulnerability and weakness, it turns into invincible strength. Do you see what I mean? It's stronger than the ego strength. Like if we can just let ourselves be really vulnerable and just use prayer, then we become invincible. This is, this is you guys, this is what I did. I would get just so vulnerable and weak to the point of, you know, I'd stay in bed. And then I'd pray really hard and I would be brought up out of bed. It's so simple. I find the difference is Westerners don't don't want to, they're scared of the vulnerability of it. Atiba, I think you even knew better than that question, really, in a funny way. I think, though, you asked it because you want to make deep contact with me. Okay? So it's good that you spoke about it. And I'm, I want to make this deep contact with you now. Okay, so look at me, look at me. And you're good enough, Atiba. Okay, can you say I'm good enough in both English and German? I'm good enough. Right. Ich bin gut genug. Right, good, good. It is the best of us that have the most self-doubts, okay? If you can overcome those self-doubts, the amount of soul that you bring in will be huge. Okay, let's say it is huge already, Atiba. How about that? Yes, right at, at the start of the, at the beginning of the satsang, when you were talking about self-trust. Right. I caught myself in placing trust in somebody else instead of my inner self. That's it. So I was I was grateful that I caught this. Yes, good. <laughs> That's it. Good. That's it. It's over and over and over. Yeah. You know, the other thing I just as a tip before we go, remember that you, we get what we're most interested in. So if we're most interested in God, we will focus on God and serve God. If we're most interested in the contents of our mind, we will play there, okay? You guys, nobody is doing anything to us. We're doing it. And if you just, really, if you just observe what you do with your mind you know in a but be generous and loving with yourself almost humorous with watching you'll see why your life is the way it is you know yeah right i mean we're doing it to ourselves it just but you guys are getting a big blast of love mm -hmm. Uh, and you turned up, which is, it's half the, it's half the work is just turning up. Yeah. Okay. So does anybody, Atiba, are you feel complete about all that? Or is there more? Yes, I feel complete. complete. Thank yeah, you. I, I feel you made the deep contact with the energy for them. Yeah. So you see, even there, 
So Atiba's question didn't sound quite right to me. So I was going like, what's going on? And then I was getting that she needed this deeper contact. That's that's the feminine energy I'm talking about. That's the loving, generous, just, and it just is like wind. It fills all the, or water. It just fills all the holes and all the cracks and you just get loved into truth. And you can love yourselves into truth. You're all worth it. Yeah. Oh, you guys, if you if you knew how precious you are to me, I, I know you'd all be very surprised if you knew. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Last call for any comments or anything? I okay. just want to say thank you. <laughs> oh, it's, it's wonderful. I couldn't imagine your energy coming so through this computer, but it's like my heart is expanding right now so thank you Pramasuda thank you sweetie thank you thank you thank you yeah nothing can stop it you guys you see I mean love is the most powerful it it's just it's it yeah and this you know is strengthening the cells of your body even yeah Right, right. And as it strengthens the love in your bodies, it gradually weakens the ego, you know, but it's not a battle. It's not a battle. It's okay for the ego to be there. It's like, you know, egos are part of God too, really. In, a, in the big sense, they're part of God too. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys have all my love. Yeah. And you're in my heart. No, oh, sweeties, thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay, bye, 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 bye.